Deputy President Officer, to ask the First Minister whether the Scottish Government will provide an urgent update on its discussions with the EIS after the announcement of new strike dates. First Minister. Well, can I say, first of all, these are really difficult times for everyone. That, of course, includes those uh, who work across the, the different parts of our public sector, and that includes uh, teachers. It's also a difficult time uh, for public spending because of the inflationary impact on the Scottish Government's uh, budget. And it's in that context uh, that I say a fair pay offer has been made uh, to teachers. Uh, that's been made as appropriate through the Scottish Negotiating Committee for teachers. Um, it is, of course, the case that industrial action is in no one's interest. It is not in the interest of teachers. It's certainly not in the interest of pupils, parents uh, or carers either, who have already, of course, faced significant disruption over the past three years. Uh, the Education Secretary is in regular dialogue with all of our teacher unions um, and spoke with the EIS General Secretary uh, most recently last Friday. Uh, these discussions are, of course, ongoing, although the Chamber will be aware uh, that only COSLA, as the employer, can make a formal pay offer to the teacher unions uh, through the SNCT. Uh, the Scottish Government does not negotiate separately with unions on teachers' pay. Michael Mara. President officer, the offer that the First Minister has described so that was rejected by teaching union unions was made at the last possible moment. It sa had sat on the Cabinet Secretary's desk for over three weeks. And since the announcement of 16 more EIS strike dates, which will close our schools, deprive our children of their education and throw family life into chaos, no dates for negotiation have been sought or fixed. Next week, the SSTA and NASUWT will strike, closing schools again. No attempt has been made to avert that action by this government. President officer, our children have lost so much in the pandemic years. How can they afford a government making so little effort to keep their schools open? First Minister. Well, that's just frankly not the case. The offer that was made to uh, teacher unions last week was the fourth offer uh, that has gone to unions. And I think anybody looks at this government, and uh, bear in mind the point I made about the Scottish Government not uh, negotiating separately with unions, it's uh, through the Scottish Negotiating Committee for Teachers. But anybody who has looked at the efforts this government has made uh, to give fair pay rises and settle any potential for industrial action with the wider local government workforce, with the NHS workforce, will know that this is a government, I think in contrast with other governments in other parts of the UK, uh, that is going to every length possible uh, to reach fair agreements with our public sector uh, trade unions. Looking at the offer made to teachers, uh, again, the fourth offer which has been made, it recognises the impact on, of the cost crisis on lower paid teachers in particular, with an increase of up to 6.85% uh, for them. The offer is the same as the offer that has already been accepted by other local government uh, workers. And, you know, I uh, have nothing but admiration for our teaching profession. They are uh, rightly paid higher than other uh, workers in, in other parts of the local government workforce. Uh, but the offer in terms of a pay increase that has been made to teachers is the same as that already accepted by the janitor in a school or by the dinner lady working in a school. So it is a fair offer. If accepted, it would mean that since 2018, teachers have had a 21.8% cumulative pay increase. And lastly, presiding officer, uh, we have the highest starting salary in the UK for a fully qualified uh, teacher under this new uh, and latest offer, a newly qualified teacher in Scotland would receive uh, seven thousand four hundred pounds more than counterparts in England. Our most experienced classroom teachers uh, get five thousand six hundred pounds more than if they were teaching in England on the main pay range. Uh, so we, I think, our Briefly, record First shows uh, our commitment to teachers, um, and I really hope this is an offer that will be accepted in the interest of teachers and pupils across the country. Stephanie Callaghan. President officer, the First Minister has noted already that strikes are in no one's best interest, not teachers and certainly not pupils. Does the First Minister agree that on a fixed budget the Scottish Government has been put in an impossible position by the UK Government with no additional support forthcoming to fund pay offers or mitigate the impacts of inflation? First Minister. That's a statement of fact, and it is important. It's a statement of fact. It's important to remember that current pay negotiations are for this financial year, 
And in this financial year, the Scottish Government's budget has been eroded to the tune of £1.7 billion pounds by inflation. And not an additional penny extra has been provided to help deal with that. But we're not standing by and doing nothing. We are working really hard to give our public sector workers a fair pay deal. Take the NHS offer that NHS unions are currently considering, an average of 7.5%. In England, under the Conservatives, in Wales, under Labour, the offer to the NHS is 4.5% on average. So we are doing everything we can to get every penny possible uh, into the pockets of public sector workers, because that's the kind of government we are. That's our values. But yes, we do have a fixed budget, and it's been eroded because of Tory government incompetence. Willie Rennie. So, so that's the message to teachers. Just be grateful. You've had your lot. You're paid enough. That's not the way to teach to treat teachers in this country. Playing one set of workers against another is a disgraceful way to treat those people who taught our young people through the pandemic. Isn't it about time that instead of making last-minute offers, hours before the strike deadline, that she treated teachers with the respect that they are due, and gave them a decent pay offer with a budget that she has got. First Minister. I know Willie Rennie doesn't get much attention these days, but even by his standards, that was a pretty shameful, shameful tone to take on an issue that is so important to teachers, pupils and parents across the country. Let me set out again the way in which we are approaching this. An offer uh, this year uh, that uh, recognises the impact of the cost crisis on the lowest paid teachers and an offer that is as fair and gives as much of an increase to teachers as the janitor and the uh, dinner lady has already accepted. In a fixed budget, part of what we've got to try to do is to be fair across all parts of the public sector and that is what we are seeking to do. Secondly, an offer that if accepted would mean that since 2018 uh, teachers would have had a 21.8% cumulative pay increase and I think they deserve every penny of it and uh, an outcome that would mean that our teachers are paid better than teachers in other parts of the UK. Highest starting salary, not just in the UK, the OECD found that starting salaries for teachers in Scotland are 17% above the EU average eh, at primary level. So that's how much we value teachers. Within a fixed budget, we are doing everything possible to get every penny possible into the pockets of public sector workers. Um, and that's the right thing to do. And that eh, tone, frankly, I think will be seen for what it was by people across Scotland. Yeah.